Hi, welcome to my ECG video blog. I'm Ken Grauer, and this is my ninth ECG video blog. Today, we have a case that highlights distinction between high grade versus complete AV block. For your convenience, I've made a website that lists key links to my ECG blog, my video blogs, and my introductory and advanced books and EPUBs on ECG interpretation. Above all is my email address. Please write me with your comments, feedback, and questions. On to today's topic. Today's case was sent to me by Dr. Gender Stroh from Liberic in the Czech Republic. The patient is a 75-year-old woman who presented to the emergency department with syncope and shortness of breath. On the basis of the simultaneously recorded three-lead rhythm strip shown here, she was diagnosed as being in complete AV block because there is a regular or at least fairly regular atrial rate, red arrows, a regular ventricular rate, green arrows, but no apparent relationship between P waves and neighboring QRS complexes, as suggested by the constantly changing PR interval before each QRS on this tracing. This indicates AV dissociation. Question. Do you agree that this is third degree, that is complete, AV block? Explain your answer. Hint. Can you explain why I did not agree that this rhythm strip shows complete AV block when I first saw it? I'll add that this patient eventually did receive a permanent pacemaker. That said, understanding why we cannot with certainty diagnose complete AV block for the rhythm strip shown here is crucial for optimal diagnosis of the AV blocks. And review of this concept is my reason for presenting this case. Note, using calipers is an invaluable way to facilitate diagnosis of complex tracings such as this one. In my opinion, it's the only way to quickly and accurately determine if P waves and QRS complexes are regular and related to each other. For example, is there a P wave here? Blue arrow. We don't see any P wave, but we wonder if a P wave might be hidden within the QRS complex of beat number three. Calipers confirm that otherwise P waves march out at a fairly regular P to P interval throughout this rhythm strip. So we surmise that the underlying atrial rhythm is indeed likely to be regular. As previously stated, the ventricular rhythm is regular and there is no relation between P waves and the QRS, as evidenced by the constantly changing PR interval before each QRS on the tracing. So why did I say that we should not be certain there is complete AV block? The answer to this question relates to how we define complete AV block with this definition highlighting the difference between AV dissociation versus complete AV block. We illustrate this concept with the rhythm strip below. The rhythm begins with normal sinus rhythm for the first three beats. What then happens? While we may not be sure whether or not the next P wave that precedes beat number four, green arrow, is conducting, we know that the P waves preceding beats number five and six are not conducting yellow arrows. They can't be, because the PR interval preceding beats 5 and 6 is just too short to conduct. This means there is AV dissociation, because there are at least some P waves that are not related to neighboring QRS complexes. Key point. Do the P waves that don't conduct have a chance to conduct, yet still fail to do so? This is, in essence, the difference between AV dissociation that is transient due to slowdown of the sinus rate or acceleration of a junctional focus versus complete AV block in which none of the P waves conduct despite being given more than adequate opportunity to do so by occurring at all different points within the cardiac cycle, 
Thus, although the P waves preceding beats number five and six in this tracing are not being conducted to the ventricles, these P waves never have a chance to conduct because their PR interval is just too short. Earlier in the tracing, when given a chance, red arrows, P waves conducted just fine. Therefore, there is AV dissociation in this tracing, but we have no idea if any AV block at all is present, because we never see P waves that should conduct and don't. In contrast, we define complete AV block as the presence of a regular or at least almost regular atrial rate, a regular or almost regular ventricular rate, but no relation between P waves and neighboring QRS complexes, despite more than adequate opportunity for P waves to conduct. Let's now get back to this case. We initially showed the first five beats in this tracing and asked as our starting point question, if these first five beats provided enough ECG evidence for definitive diagnosis of complete AV block. We reviewed the criteria for complete AV block which include a regular or at least almost regular atrial rate, a regular or at least almost regular ventricular rate, and no relation between the two, such that P waves are completely unrelated to neighboring QRS complexes, despite adequate opportunity for at least some of the P waves to conduct. Each of these criteria is met for the first five beats in this tracing, except for this last disclaimer. Have P waves truly had an adequate chance to conduct by occurring at all points in the cardiac cycle? The answer to this question is revealed in the last four beats of this rhythm strip. Let's now show the last four beats. A regular atrial rhythm continues, red arrows. The ventricular rhythm remains regular, green arrows. But now there is a relation between P waves and neighboring QRS complexes in that the PR interval preceding each of the last four beats is constant. Therefore, these last four beats are conducting, which means that this rhythm cannot possibly be complete AV block since there is definite evidence of conduction. There is two to one AV block for the last four beats in this tracing with red arrow P waves conducting and yellow arrow P waves not conducting. Why was the diagnosis missed? Because this last disclaimer was missed. The rhythm strip of the first five beats was simply too short to ensure that P waves had an adequate chance to conduct, yet still failed to do so. The fact that reasonable, that is two to one, AV conduction is able to occur with the normal PR interval seen preceding the last four QRS complexes in this tracing suggests that the degree of AV block may not be as high grade in severity as was initially thought. In any case, the degree of AV block is definitely not complete. Pearl. Usually, the ventricular rate should be less than about 50 per minute for the diagnosis of complete AV block to be made. This is because we need a slow enough rate in order to guarantee that at least most P waves have a chance to conduct by falling outside of the refractory period. And this criterion is more difficult to satisfy at faster rates. I'll emphasize that this does not mean that there can't be complete AV block when the ventricular rate is above 50 per minute, but it does mean that it becomes more difficult to diagnose complete AV block at faster rates, and that you'll often need a longer period of monitoring in such cases. The ventricular escape rate here is right around 50 per minute, which helps to explain why P waves simply did not have an adequate chance to conduct for a short rhythm strip of only five beats. Let's clarify the concepts covered in this case by use of a laddergram. Note, do not be concerned if you've never worked with laddergrams before. While learning how to draw laddergrams is indeed challenging and requires substantial practice to become proficient, learning to read laddergrams is easy, as I'll prove to you over the next few minutes, so that by the end of this video, you should be comfortable understanding the basics of laddergrams and be able to appreciate how using a laddergram can facilitate understanding the mechanism of complex arrhythmias such as the one in this case. What then is a laddergram? 
A latigram is simply a graphic tool used to illustrate the conduction pathway for a series of cardiac beats or cardiac rhythm. It expresses what happens over the time that the rhythm is recorded. There are three tiers drawn on a standard latigram that represent the path of conduction through the atria, through the AV node, and through the ventricles. A fourth tier for the SA node, which is where the impulse begins, is implied at the very top of the latigram, but is usually not drawn in. And finally, the concept of time. Time is conveyed along the horizontal axis in the same way and at the same relative speed that a rhythm strip is recorded. So with a latigram, we schematically represent the sequence of events as the rhythm unfolds. Conduction is fast through the atria. The impulse then slows down a bit as it passes through the AV node. It then speeds up again as it passes through the ventricles. Let's look at some examples. This slide illustrates a number of key latigram elements as they occur on this schematic rhythm strip. Let's look at them one at a time. Beats number one and two are normal sinus beats. Note, there is no SA nodal tier. Instead, we start the latigram at the top of the atrial tier, which simulates initiation of sinus conduction from the relative location of the SA node, which is at the top of the right atrium. On the latigram, conduction through specialized intraatrial pathways is fast, which we schematically illustrate by a vertical line in the atrial tier. Note that this vertical line through the atrial tier is just below where the P wave is on the rhythm strip. Conduction then slows down a bit through the AV node, after which the impulse is conducted to the ventricles. Beat number three is a PAC. Note the presence of an early occurring, different looking P wave in front of beat three. We schematically illustrate the concept of a PAC on a latigram as an early beat that occurs within the atrial tier that then conducts both back through the atria as well as downward to arrive at the AV node. The PAC then conducts normally through the AV node and onto the ventricles. The sequence is similar with junctional beats as shown for beat number four. Here we see a negative P wave with a short PR interval preceding the QRS of beat number four in this lead two. We schematically illustrate this in the latigram by an early occurring impulse within the AV nodal tier that conducts back to the atria to produce the negative P wave before the QRS of beat number four, after which the impulse is conducted down to the ventricles. The sequence of events changes with ventricular beats, as shown for beat number five. The impulse now begins in the ventricles, as schematically shown by the red circle at the bottom of the ventricular tier. Conduction then works its way backward. Ventricular beats may or may not conduct all the way back to the atria. Finally, is the concept of representing what happens with AV block. For time's sake, we simply show one example of AV block in which beat number six is conducted normally, but the next on-time P wave after beat number six is blocked. Normal conduction resumes with beat number seven. We schematically illustrate the concept of non-conduction as shown within the blue circle. So, how should we draw the latigram to represent events that occurred in this case that we are discussing? Well, before we begin to draw the latigram, we need to first address the concept of escape. An escape pacemaker may arise if, for whatever reason, the SA nodal pacemaker either slows down or stops, or if P waves suddenly fail to be conducted to the ventricles. Escape rhythms most often arise from the AV node, but they can also arise from other sites in the heart, including elsewhere in the atria, 
lower down in the conduction system in the his or bundle branches or from a site in non-specialized ventricular myocardium. Most of the time, an escape rhythm will be regular or at least almost regular, which helps us to recognize when an escape rhythm has taken over. Let's now look at the simultaneously recorded three lead rhythm strip for this case. Note that QRS morphology changes after the first five beats. This is seen best in lead V1, but a difference in QRS morphology is also seen in the other two leads. Specifically, there is an R, S, R prime, S prime complex in lead V1 for the first five beats on the tracing within the blue rectangle, whereas there is only an R, S complex for the last four beats within the red rectangle. Since we previously established that these last four beats are sinus conducted, albeit with two to one AV block, red and yellow arrows, this tells us that the first five beats must represent an escape focus beyond the core. Since QRS morphology of the escape focus for these first five beats looks different than the QRS of sinus conducted beats, the escape focus almost certainly arises below the AV node. But since the QRS is only minimally widened and has an incomplete right bundle branch block appearance, we suspect the escape focus arises from the bundle branch system, probably from one of the hemifascicles. That said, all that counts clinically is that the escape focus arises from below the AV node. Let's now draw the latogram for this 9B tracing. For simplicity, we will use a single lead to convey events in the atrial, AV nodal, and ventricular tiers. The first rule for drawing a latogram is to start with what you know. Usually, this entails identifying P waves. Red arrows highlight the regularly occurring atrial rate throughout this tracing. To convey this on the latogram, we drop a vertical line from the onset of each P wave on the rhythm strip down through the atrial tier. We next look to see if there are any sinus conducted beats. We have previously established that the last four QRS complexes on this tracing are sinus conducted because each of these last four beats is preceded by an upright P wave with a fixed and normal PR interval. Alternate P waves, yellow arrows, are non-conducted. Let's draw in events for these four sinus conducted beats, beginning with beat number six. To do so, we drop a vertical line from the onset of each QRS complex. Note that we represent normal conduction through the ventricles by a slightly angulated, rapid traveling line with an arrow directed downward. We complete representation of these sinus conducted beats by filling in the AV nodal tier, which is easily accomplished by simply connecting the lines. Conduction through the AV node is angulated compared to near vertical conduction through the atrial tier because transmission of the impulse through the AV node slows down. Note. Every other P wave for these last four beats is non-conducted, yellow arrows. We show this on the latogram by a stop end on the line that passes through the middle tier to convey that the impulse never gets through the AV node within the blue circles. So, our latogram for the last four beats on the tracing is complete and shows two to one AV block. This leaves us to draw on events corresponding to the first five beats on the tracing. As an aside, as a guiding principle for drawing latigrams, we suggest that other than for sinus conducted beats that you save drawing in AV nodal events until the end, as the very last thing that you draw on the latigram. Let's now finish the latigram for this tracing. I'll do this by first adding back red arrows for the regularly occurring P waves that are seen throughout this rhythm strip. But unlike conduction of every other P wave for the last four beats on the tracing, we've already established that none of the earlier occurring P waves are being conducted to the ventricles, yellow arrows. This is because the PR interval is continually changing. 
Since it is easiest to save the AV nodal tear for last, we next need to draw in the ventricular tear. To do this, we need to determine the direction of ventricular depolarization. Since we've established that the first five QRS complexes are ventricular escape beats, the direction of ventricular depolarization is upward. To determine where to place ventricular complexes on the latogram, we draw vertical lines corresponding to the beginning of the QRS on the rhythm strip. We then draw in the ventricular tier with arrowed lines heading up toward the AV nodal and atrial tiers. Not knowing how far retrograde conduction goes from these five ventricular escape beats, we arbitrarily stop our arrow low down in the AV nodal tier. All that remains is to complete the AV nodal tier. This is easy because we know that none of the atrial impulses quite make it out of the AV node, albeit some impulses come closer than others to getting through. The final question is why are some P waves able to conduct at the end of the rhythm strip, but not in the beginning? Or in other words, why is this rhythm not complete AV block? Remember that the key criterion for diagnosing complete AV block is that all P waves must fail to conduct despite being given adequate opportunity to do so. In this tracing, P waves do not occur at all points in the cardiac cycle for the first five beats, as there is no PR interval between 150 to 400 milliseconds. When a P wave does occur with a PR interval within this window, as it does for each of the last four QRS complexes on this tracing, there is conduction. Thus, we have shown on this latogram that P waves can consistently conduct when the PR interval is 195 milliseconds, which means that we have proved that the rhythm is not complete AV block. On the, on the contrary, the degree of AV block may not be all that severe since virtually all P waves in this first part of the tracing that don't conduct should not be expected to conduct since they either occur in the refractory period or with a relatively short PR interval. That's it for now. I hope this ECG video has clarified the definition of complete AV block versus AV dissociation, as well as providing a primer for the basics of drawing a latogram. This is Ken Grauer saying goodbye for now.